with no sound. So if you're hopping on with me live, if you can let me know that you can hear me okay, obviously I'm joining you from my car. I'm hanging out at my daughter's volleyball practice. And if the service isn't great, maybe you won't be hearing me. Um, so again, if you just joined us, if you can let me know sound wise, if we sound okay here, if you're seeing me, um, yay. Okay, great. Cause I'm doing this again because it was muted. I think when I went live earlier, so I'm so sorry about that. Hanging out my car, volleyball practice for my daughter. This is my life for sure. Um, but just had to share, um, some of the great stuff on functional seizures with you all. Um, my name is Julie Hirschberg. If we haven't met, I'm a neurologic physical therapy. This is our little old school logo of reactive therapy and wellness. And, um, just love to share what we're learning and doing at Reactive. And this whole month has been on functional neurologic disorders, a big passion of mine, but also it's FND Awareness Month. And I got a great question from a colleague, Lily, this is for you. Uh, she's in our Brain Bites group, uh, which is a group of interdisciplinary group of clinicians um, that really love on functional neurologic disorders and some of those uh, more complex neurologic diagnoses. And she sent a question asking for resources on functional seizures. And so I'm going to just share you, share with you a quick little screenshot of that because some people have asked me, what exactly is this community? How does this work? And, um, for, for clinicians, this is our but this is kind of behind the scenes. And this is our Slack, which has channels for different diagnoses where people can post things, they can post videos, questions, and then we all respond. So you can see I responded and shared, I love neurosymptoms.org. I shared some of my favorite pieces, the React trial in seizures, a huge favorite autonomic changes in functional seizures, a huge favorite of mine. And I'm getting a comment here. The functional seizures are not easy to navigate sometimes. I don't even think sometimes, like a lot of the time, functional seizures are really difficult to navigate. And so I want to give you all some resources here to help you navigate them and to help therapists navigate them because I think this is something we're just not as familiar with. Here uh, also, I have several live videos and if you weren't familiar, if you weren't familiar, if you didn't know, we have a YouTube channel and in that channel are several playlists. We have a playlist on functional neurologic disorders. And in there, we have at least two where we're talking specifically about functional seizures. There's a hot off the press and there's functional seizures for PTs and OTs. So you can grab those from our YouTube uh, channel and playlist. By the way, if you're on our newsletter, I'll put this all in the newsletter on Friday um, and next Monday as well. So you'll get all the links to this. Um, but I wanted to show you how we do this in the Slack. Make it simple, make it quick for clinicians to find all of the pieces. And then you can see Zach responded to with absolutely one of my favorites. It's an entire book and it is, it is for kids, but I got to tell you, this book is phenomenal and it is, um, a big portion is on functional seizures. So I highly recommend the book as well. So lots of great resources, but I wanted to share a few highlights for you for functional seizures, at least for where you could get started as a therapist. And if you're a person with functional seizures, you could also share these with your therapist. Um, now I got a great question. Um, from Rebecca, who joined Brain Bites this this uh, go around. By the by, the way, this is our community for therapists. It closes tomorrow. That's why I'm talking about it all the time. Oh, I wish this was a better picture because it's so good. I will send a link. It's free, full text. This was an article um, for psychiatrists actually telling them about functional seizures. And what I loved is that it actually compares and contrasts functional seizures from epileptic seizures. And you can see this sometimes, sometimes commonly, rarely, and all of the different characteristics. So Rebecca had asked me how to distinguish those, um, and particularly 
um, they can both happen. People can have epileptic seizures and functional seizures. Um, so what is cut off on the side, unfortunately, are those characteristics, those clinical features, such as violent movements tend to happen in functional seizures, but not in epileptic seizures. Side to side head movements, that's something I see a lot in epileptic seizures, not, or I'm sorry, in functional seizures and not epileptic seizures. Biting the tip of the tongue or the side of the tongue. So the side of the tongue is really common in, um, in epileptic seizures, for example. Eye opening um, versus eye closing distinct differences between epileptic and non-epileptic seizures. Now, one of the things that's really um, helpful too is if a person is it has an EEG, the, the, the pattern on an EEG is very distinct in epileptic and non-epileptic seizures too. So that can help differentiate them. So that was from a question from uh, Rebecca. And Rebecca, I'm so excited you're in our community because what we have in our Brain Bites community are these pathways of getting started in FND, functional seizures. You can literally search everything that we do and quickly find things. And I think it's a great time saver for people. So I'm going to bring up another one of my favorites. So that's more from a diagnosis standpoint, differentiating, oh, this is the article, Functional Non-Epileptic Tax, Important uh, Attacks. This is a free full-text article. It was in um, Psych Bulletin, I believe. Um, but I'll share the full-text li link in our newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter as a clinician, join at reactiveeducation.com. As a, as a patient, join on reactivept.com. I'll send a little different newsletter, but I'll, I will include the links to these articles. Now, something that I think is so important when you're working with somebody with functional seizures is understanding the history of functional seizures and where that person may have gotten misinformation from a medical provider or a medical provider, maybe even a really traumatic uh, experience with a medical provider. And um, the, the history, I think, is why. So I don't know if you could read this. I don't even know if I could read this. It's so tiny. Um, but there was a really great uh, journal that um, just, I believe it was last year. And again, I'll put the links to all of these. Um, they, um, they published the whole journal on functional seizures. It was an epilepsy journal. And this was a great one on the history. And I, I just think this is so important. Going from, so on functional seizures, going from things being supernatural to reproductive organs moving in the body, that's like a, that's one that just really like kind of cracks me up, but is also just like the history, uh, the anti-woman history of that and anti-understanding of women um, is just really uh, blows my mind. Um, the other is um, conversion and disassociation. So this is more recent history. And I think this is what maybe most people have heard from a physician is this is a conversion disorder, a dissociation, that a functional seizure is disso a dissociation. And, um, and there are pieces that can still occur. I, we definitely can find disassociation as part of functional seizures, um, but not always. And I think just like in functional neurologic disorders in general, there's not always a psychological reason uh, for them. And then um, the last one being really a more modern um, and based on the neuroscience piece, which is cognitive and this circuit, it's a neurocircuitry issue underlying the functional seizures. And this is, I think, is so important because when it comes to treatment, 
I think understanding how the patient understands the functional seizure and then filling in the gaps, answering those questions. What is really causing the functional seizures? Now, this always brings me back to the pie chart, right? So let's, uh, whoops, um, sorry. Let's pause for a moment and hit on the pie chart. So when it comes to any functional neurologic disorder, thinking about the underlying issues associated or contributing to it, we we use a pie chart framework. And that includes pieces of autonomic, sensory system, lifestyle pieces, psychosocial, uh, motor control, and um, physical impairments. Two of the biggest pieces of the pie that I have seen clinically and the literature supports this are sensory and autonomic. And um, those are two really important pieces to investigate then. So doing a, an autonomic screen and assessment as a PT, OT, psychologist, speech therapist, and a sensory assessment. Now I talked Yes, was it just yesterday? Um, about this great article that my OT colleagues at Mass General put out. They're joining us in Brain Bites for a special bonus session, by the way, um, to talk about sensory modulation. It's highly applicable in functional seizures and really, really important. So that understanding of the sensory system um, and where that person is, um, what's their sensory profile, what is their, um, uh, what are their uh, their sensory sensitivities, um, what kind of sensory information do they need for their body, um, as well as their autonomic. And those two overlap and intersect a lot. Those two pie- pieces are huge. So if you are a therapist and going, I have no idea what to do in functional seizures, that first step would be to understand autonomic and sensory influences. Now, one picture that I didn't get to share yesterday, and um, and this is directly from that article. So this is Julie McLean, Jessica Ranford, two OTs from Mass General. This is in their article on the OT approach for FND, sensory modulation as a, as a training. Um, this again, a great place to start in seizures is understanding the arousal continuum and helping the person explore and recognize their own arousal levels. Ideally, we're in this just right balance, so not low arousal, not high arousal. And what I think is really important is exploring the sensory and autonomic systems that can influence those. And so I talked about this yesterday. If you missed the live, go check the one. It's posted already that I did on their whole article, which is a great step-by-step, excuse me, of how to do this in occupational therapy. But I think it has some amazing nuggets for PTs and psychologists and speech therapists. We should all really understand the sensory system and how it how it interacts and how this might contribute to functional seizures. I absolutely um, agree. So um, uh, again, for people that are looking to just get started, I think using this and exploring sensory and autonomic activities where that person can modulate themselves. And if they're not in that just right balance, so like, let's say they're like at a 10 of arousal, what activities bring them back down? And if they're at like a zero of arousal, what activities can kind of bring them back up to that just right, like four or five level? So our OT colleagues do this so well. I think all therapists can have a really big role in functional seizures. And we do understand from the literature that people with functional seizures can respond really positively to therapy and uh, have improvement to where they have no seizures and maintain that improvement over a long period of time. Now, 
It's not easy. I think it really takes understanding your nervous system regulation and understanding those pieces that might trigger a, a seizure in you. Um, but, um, but it's very, it's doable. It's really doable. And I think one of the biggest, scariest things in functional seizures is the unpredictability, um, the lack of control, uh, self agency is at the heart of a lack of self agency. The heart is at the heart of functional neurologic disorders. So, um, functional seizures really get at that because they're not all the time. I, I mean, for some people, they happen quite frequently, but, um, they're unpredictable, not always a clear trigger. And that's why I find um, this diagram and those pieces in understanding sensory modulation so important because it helps us understand for a person, uh, like most people don't just have one trigger, but it's multiple pieces of sensory and autonomic, typically lifestyle to the sleep piece, um, the, the even like eating regular meals, all of those lifestyle, great lifestyle pieces that our uh, OTs also do on a daily basis with, with patients. Um, this is an advertisement for OT, <laughs> by the way. I, I think OTs are fabulous and just such a key component of our teams in working with functional neurologic disorders, but especially functional seizures. So, um, I wanted to give you a, a piece of that and, um, it really coming from great questions from you all, great questions from our Brain Bites group. And if you are a clinician, um, our Brain Bites group, this community that asks the good questions that we, I get to be in that community with them, um, sharing all of the time. It is closing tomorrow. So we open twice a year. This is our spring opening. It closes tomorrow. And uh, Brittany and I, by the way, just again, if you're, if you're a clinician, if you're on the fence about brain bites, we just opened one-on-one -on -one mentor sessions with us tomorrow. We have six spots available. It's not a lot. So if you are a clinician and you're on the fence and you want to do a one-on-one -on -one with with either of us I put the link in the bio you can go right to it I know one clinician already reached out so we're gonna meet tomorrow I'm really excited about that um, but we want to chat with you we want to see where you are in your clinical journey see if this is the right fit with for you and what resources we might have to to help you so if you're a clinician I would love to hear from you. I'd love to meet you. There's nothing better than meeting my fellow PTs, OTs, psychologists, speech therapists, other clinicians, because you're so passionate and you so care about your patients and helping people get better. It like, it just brings me so much joy. I love being with you. So sign up for one of those sessions if you're interested and a clinician. Those are tomorrow only and Brain Bites closes tomorrow. Um, so that is my plug. I love this community so much. I'm seeing the changes and improvements that our clinicians are having with patients with functional neurologic disorders. So I just want to shout it from the rooftops because I think this community is really making a difference in the world of F and D and many other things. So if you're a clinician and you want to learn more, you can go to reactiveeducation.com slash brain bites. But hey, set up a one-on-one -on -one session with me uh, tomorrow and we can chat about it. I would love to meet you. Brittany would love to meet you. Um, I am totally looking forward to it. And thanks so much for being here. Have a good night. Keep sending your questions, by the way. I love them. So have a good night and I will see you soon.